Hey guys, it's Caitlin. I wanted to jump on here because I was at an amazing Sangeet last night, which I will talk about in a minute. Um, if you follow me on Instagram or of course Facebook, I'm sure you saw me posting a lot about it because there was just so much interesting and amazing and cool things happening um, that I just literally couldn't stop posting about it. Um, but what was cool was I observed something and learned something that really related to my views on life and philosophy and where we're going as humanity, as a collective consciousness. And those deeper beliefs aren't something I really talk about too much publicly, um, or at least it just doesn't have a reason to come up a lot in this, in this sort of format. So what I saw gave me a lot of hope, and I hope that by sharing it, it'll give you guys a lot of hope as well. So what a Sangeet is, um, it was my first one, and it is basically the pre-wedding celebration um, in Indian tradition. And there's performances that share how friends and family sort of know and want to celebrate the couple. Um, just a true celebration of love. Now, I went to this not knowing anyone. Uh, I went with a friend of mine, Kenny, who took me. And um, so obviously he knew the couple, but I didn't know anyone. So just let me set the stage for what it was like. So first off, it was held at Carrie Blast Furnace, which is not a traditional wedding venue to begin with. Um, so I just loved the uniqueness that the couple brought to their celebration, just in even the venue they chose and what went on at the celebration. So when I walk in, uh, I again, I wasn't sure what to wear. I didn't know really a whole lot about the tradition other than what I had read on the internet. So, um, but immediately I felt welcome. I met the groom and uh, both the bride and the groom out of 250 people remembered everyone's names and it, I just felt so welcome immediately. It just, it, I was welcomed with love and open arms, which I thought was amazing. Um, it was very clear right off the bat, it didn't matter what you were wearing, what you, how you knew the bride and groom, it was just truly a celebration of love in the most away, amazing way. So for example, when the mom of the groom got up to give a speech, she was just tearfully saying that she was just amazed by how many people showed up to celebrate the couple and how she was just so grateful that everyone had had their backs and that she had all of our backs and that her doors were always open and always welcome. And, and so that just set the tone for the night, I think, was just that there was so much love and acceptance in the room because it was truly a celebration of love, not just going through the motions of a ceremony or um, traditional celebration. It was truly, truly a celebration of love. So when the performances started, those were something that friends and family did that was reflective of how they knew the bride or groom or something that was special with their relationship with the bride and groom. And again, it was just this loving display of everything under the sun. There were speeches, there were poems, there were dances, there were um, these puppet grand looking things that were used in a dance and um, all that's on my Instagram story if you want to see it and I posted some on Facebook but the point is it was just this wide array of of just a variety of love and celebration and joy. So then after the performances there was a bonfire outside and, and couple friends were just sharing stories about the couple and um, and then there was this dance party inside and there was this giant uh, bouncy ball I guess you could say huge 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 like it's bigger than me um, because the groom has started uh, City of Play which is in Pittsburgh and it's a way um, for people to come together and play games together and share in that joy. So literally everybody, it doesn't matter what you're wearing or how dressed up you are, we're playing with this ball and pushing it around and dancing. And it's in the dust on the carry blast furnace in the in the giant, um, I guess, I don't know what you'd call it, the big room we were in. But so everybody, it doesn't matter how dressed up you were, was getting dusty and just dancing. And a lot of their friends are in the performing arts. So um, people were just dancing in the most uninhibited, creative, amazing ways. I literally felt like, I was a part of this art that was being created. 
So what I thought was so amazing was there was one point where you guys know how much I love documenting amazing experiences like that. I, I always love to remember exactly what it felt like to be there and exactly what it felt like to take place in it. But there was one point where I put my phone down, put everything away, and just wanted to be able to dance completely freely, like both hands up in the air, just dance from my soul and it was amazing the kind of joy and freedom and pure happiness that came onto this dance floor with so many people just being completely authentically themselves and what i realized is this not only gives permission for other people to be more authentically themselves as well but it also makes each person participating feel understood and accepted. So what I believe is that we are heading to a point in our world where there are more and more people I see that are living this authentic life. And I think when you have that, like I said, it not only gives other people permission, but it creates this safe loving space for other people to be more of themselves too. So that's the reason I went into such detail when setting the stage about the wedding was that I, I think this whole, the whole vibe of the ceremony set this safe, accepting, love is all that matters kind of tone. And so once we got to the dance party, it just felt like there was such freedom, like a tangible feeling of freedom and joy and happiness that was coming onto the dance floor and just given the most creative expression as everybody celebrated the love of the night. Um, and like I said, I didn't even know anybody else at this at this wedding. And it was just amazing to be able to to not matter if you're dancing with a complete stranger, but just to be feeling that joy. So the cool realization I had was that I think as we move to this point where more and more people are living from that more authentic space, it creates this, I think we'll get to a tipping point where once enough people are living that way and being true to themselves and authentic, it will sort of create this tipping point where as a whole, we become this more cooperative collective consciousness. So what I thought was interesting is that I've always believed it doesn't have to take a majority of people to do that. It just takes a critical mass. So the critical mass out of 10 people could be three people dancing authentically to make the other seven people feel like they have permission to do the same. So I kind of believe that's what's happening with our world as more and more people start to live from this authentic, expressive way of showing who they really are and being who they really are. It sets that that stage for everybody else to do the same and it makes people feel understood and loved and accepted. So what I thought was neat about seeing this exhibited at this wedding celebration was that Again, it didn't take all 250 people to have to be dancing that way or expressing the love and creativity in that way. It only took a few people to get out on the dance floor and just be fully embodied in who they really are and expressing themselves in their own unique way to make other people join in and participate. And that's, I think, why I felt compelled to put my phone and camera down and just be fully in the moment experiencing it truly and freely and experiencing the happiness and joy. So I think it's just reflective that that is where we're headed. And it was just a night that I was, I was talking with my friend Kenny, who I was there with, and he just said, isn't this the kind of night that just restores your faith in humanity? And I completely agree. But uh, I think it's just an important reminder that if we all want to live in a world where we feel safe and loving and accepted and we live in this cooperative culture, if that's the vision of something that you want, we all must start by being more of who we are and sharing that with the world openly and being free with our creative expression and to live in that joy and happiness and presence. And that creates the safe, loving, accepting platform for everybody else to do the same. So if we want that to be our end goal, we have to all start by living that ourselves and living more authentically and being in that space to play our part in creating that type of world. So the next time 
you're out somewhere where you get the urge to just be a little more free or be a little bit more of yourself, remember that by embracing that, we're literally changing the traje trajectory of humanity and our culture because that is when we're participating in that movement to where we all become more free, more accepting, and we, we, where we can all live to be more of who we are. So I hope that story gives you as much hope as I felt last night. It was an amazing night. Congrats to Greg and Catherine. This was, it was, it was just an amazing night. And thank you to all the people who were there that just participated in the most amazing celebration of love I've seen in a long time. So I hope everybody's having a great weekend. Happy holiday weekend. And we'll see you guys soon.